All right, everybody, welcome to module number six of your Surf Safe Food Manager certification. Um, we're only going to cover one page, and I'm going to go at a pretty fast clip. So keep up. Uh, well, what am I saying? You have pause. You can hit pause, replay, rewind. So sixth module, page eight of your study guide. Again, if you need a copy, email me. I will happily send you a copy. All right. So here we go. Now what I'm going to do with this module is I am going to um, combine parasites and biological toxins. And you're going to see why I'm going to do that. So look at parasites, parasites and biological toxins. All right. There are some similarities between the two. And the one is seafood, all right? So let's put that in there. Now, if you are visual, a very visually oriented person, which most of us are, and that is why um, Apple products have been so successful, draw fish, right? Do something to help you remember this stuff, right? So seafood, and I'm, I'm not a great artist, but I'm going to do the best that I can because... I want to pass this test and even though my fish looks like something from a National Geographic special, that's my fish. That's all. Think of crabs, right? You know, they're kind of ugly. I don't know. It looks something like that. No, that looks like a bat. But anyway, we put a whole bunch of little legs. I don't know, maybe a tick. Anyway, you get the idea. Use visualization. Do everything that you can to pass this. Um, the other thing that they have in common is produce. Right, produce, aka veggies, aka in case you don't know means also known as right. So produce is a cool word, right? Because produce also sounds like produce. Two completely different words, and that's why the English language is so darn complicated. Produce, right? Um, what else have we got? So parasites. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, um, you know what? Let me break away over here for just a second. Because with the biological toxins, I want you to get familiarization with these two words or, or these two types of toxins. Under seafood toxins, you've got scumbroid, S-C-O-M-B-R-O-I-D. And then you've got Sega. Ooh. Sega, Sega came back, came out bad, right? You have Sega which sounds like cigarette, right? Now, within each one of these, in your booklet, you'll see the different types of fish that are associated with every each one of those. Now, with going back a little further, even let's look at seafood again. If you look at the bottom of biological toxins. It has purchased fish from approved suppliers. Since cooking and freezing cannot destroy these toxins, right? So what does that mean to purchase from approved suppliers? It means that if there's a little white van down by the beach selling seafood, don't buy it there because they are not and will never be inspected by the health department. Okay, so I don't care how great a, a price you found on stone crabs from that little white van down by the beach. Don't, that this will not kill certain these these um, cooking will not kill these these toxins. Okay, um, so be mindful of your suppliers. Cook like you're cooking for your family, your little sister, your little brother, your grandmother, etc. Um, what else have we got? Uh, contaminated water can can also lead to a problem. Okay, uh, that's it. Uh, all right, that's good. I'm just looking here. Well, oh, this is what I I knew there was something important. Thank you for reminding me. Boy, I'm glad one of you was looking. All right, so up here there's something that isn't down here. All right, and that is this one wild game 
Now, wild game is not the Lakers versus the, uh, the, the New York Knicks. It's not Miami Heat, and it's not a crazy basketball game or a football game. Wild game is the following. Have you seen the movie Bambi? Probably have, right? So if you have watched the movie Bambi, right, you know that Bambi lives in the forest, right? But let's just say I'm a hunter and I love to eat deer meat. Well, Bambi, if I shoot Bambi and I kill Bambi, Bambi becomes deer meat. We don't call it deer meat in the industry. We call it venison, right? That's what Bambi becomes ultimately, right? But since Bambi was out there in the forest foraging for food, and I came and I and I shot Bambi in the head, or wherever you shoot wild game, I don't know. I don't. I really don't hunt, guys. But anyway, Bambi was wild game. Bambi became deer meat. It's on the plate now as venison. Can I do that? Can I hunt wild game? Can I serve it? Can I sell it at a restaurant? And the answer is emphatically yes. I can. But. Yes, but. Oh, there's always a but. Right? Yeah, there is. There is a but. And that's okay. In order, I'm going to erase my fish. I hope you, when I become famous, I'll autograph those for you. So yes, what do I need? In order to sell that, I need a variance. Variance is a nice word for permit, right? Now, let's say I do want to sell venison at my restaurant, but I don't want to go through this. Can I still sell venison at my restaurant? The answer is still yes. All I need to do is find myself a supplier that already has a permit on file and now I can sell it because the supplier who hunts wild game, who killed Bambi, became deer meat and is now venison, has a permit. That's it. That's it. I, it doesn't matter if it's in season, off season, what the deer ate in the forest. It's in the forest. No one's going to go out there and feed the deer. None of that matters. What matters is that there's a variance, there's a permit, either from me, the restaurant owner, or from the supplier whom I got the wild game from. What else do people eat? Some people eat squirrels, some people eat raccoons. There's all types of wild animals that can be consumed. Okay, um, I'm sorry if you are a Bambi fan, but that's okay. We'll be all right. Let's move forward. Let's go to fun guy. Ready? So we're in the middle of page eight. I did promise I would move at a steady clip. Um, you have the advantage of hitting pause, fast forward, or rewind. Right? All right. Here we go. Uh, middle of page eight. You've got the word fun guy. Do what you can to memorize things like this, right? So think of this instead. Right? Think of fun guy. Right? Some guy that's a load of fun. He's a little crazy. Right? And some fun guys are harmless. Some fun guys are not so harmless. Okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at some, uh, some things about fun guy. Right away, under fun guy, you've got molds and yeast. All right? You've got that. Now, as you keep going, it says, are generally responsible for spoiling food and rarely cause illness. Right? Rarely cause illness. Right? That means that sometimes fun guy isn't that fun. That means sometimes fun guy can create problems for us, all right? So as we keep looking, here's the great thing about fun guy. Fun guy, you can see it, you can smell it, or you can even taste it, 
right? So some foods, some cheeses, mold is naturally occurring in some cheeses. So if you see that the cheese is a little green, don't throw it out. Ask your manager, ask the cook, ask somebody. What I don't want you to do is that I don't want you to assume that the cheese is bad. Because if you didn't already know this, when you assume, you make an ass out of you and me. And because you decided to assume, and you threw out all that moldy cheese, which was part of the food product, now you have another problem on your hands, and that is that you are fired, potentially. Okay, so don't assume, go ask. Okay, and let's say that your manager or supervisor or somebody that knows about that food product isn't there, it's okay. Put a little note, stick a note on it that's, that reads, do not use, right? Or do not this card, okay? And then what you want to do is you want to either, if you, if you haven't already, right? You want to call, text, or email the person in charge and say, hey, by the way, I put a note on it. I really don't know if it's bad. Nobody was around to ask. And everybody that was around didn't know if it was bad. So there it is. Um, I put a little note on it and then follow up, but don't throw it out. Now, there are some molds that are not good, right? So what have you got? I'm going to draw for you my very own bag of bread, right? So let's draw this bag of bread. And let's throw several slices of bread in the bag, right? This might have happened to you at home already. Um... And let's say that there's mold in one of these slices, right? And you decide, you know what? I'm just going to throw that slice of bread out, and I'm going to keep the rest of that bag of bread. Now, here's the problem. It's what you don't see that is the problem, right? What you don't see is that throughout the bag, there could be spores of mold all over it. But you don't see it because they're so tiny. Or when you go to take the slice of bread out as you moved everything, you, you contaminated the entire bag, with that visible portion of mold. So what am I saying? Are you seriously gonna keep a bag of moldy bread that was between $1.50 on the low end to maybe as much as $4.50, right? And potentially become ill. No, I, I, I wouldn't recommend it, right? You wanna, especially in the industry, in the, in the restaurant business, we're not gonna take that risk. We love our customers and we love our customers to death, but we don't want to love them to death, right? We don't want to love them to, to, the, to the cemetery, right? Now, let's change the numbers because some people are like, oh, that's easy. I can throw that out, right? All right, so now let's make believe you, threw, you, you potentially had to throw away $150 to as much as... $4,500 worth of bad food. It happens quite often, right? When you have outbreaks of different types of food, they're throwing out millions of pounds of beef or romaine lettuce or things like that. Uh, again, don't do, don't go throwing out food because I don't want you to assume. But what I do want you to do is I want you to, and this is not on the test either, by the way, right? But I want you to CYA, right? What is CYA? CYA, I'll put it this way so you can see it. I want you to CYA. CYA means I want you to cover your ass, okay? You don't want sick customers. You don't want the restaurant potentially closing down, but you also don't want to get fired, okay? So ask, don't assume, cover yourself, take care of your customers. Remember, this is a food manager certification. 
Um, so it's time to put on our big boy and our big girl pants and take care of take care of business. All right, that's it. I'm going to the bottom of the page, and the bottom of the page is chemical contamination, and that will be our wrap. And how are we doing with time? We're doing great. Chemical. Contamination. All right, so chemical contamination, ladies and gentlemen, looks like this. Um, lubricants, sanitizers, polishes, polishers, right? Polishing, polishes, um, uh, cleaning products. What else? Cleaning supplies. Oh, uh, metal. Toxic metal. Toxic metals. Right? We also have glass. Um, bum, 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 bum. Oh, first aid. Oh, um, actually, let's go with this. Hair. Fingernails. Jewelry. Oh, I'm sorry. Not jewelry. And not fingernails. That's on the next page. That's it. Sorry. My bad. I jumped ahead to the next page. This is where we are. This is where we are. My apologies. I'm thinking ahead to uh, physical contaminants. All right, so lubricants. Um, so we're talking about uh, deli, deli slicers, right? So when you when you go to um, supermarket and you get cheese or meat, right? Cheese or meat. Those blades that go around at high speeds that are very sharp need a lubricant. So those lubricants need to be safe for human consumption. Sanitizers. Um, when you're cleaning and sanitizing, if any traces are left, they need to be safe for human consumption. Polishes. We're talking about whether it's for window or stainless steel metals, stove tops, things like that. Cleaning products. We're talking about some, some well-known names like Clorox, etc. So think of those cleaning products. Um, metals. So metals and toxic metals. So make believe that this is a copper container and this copper container, I can use this copper container only for non-acidic foods, right? So non-acidic is okay. But the moment I use that copper container and I add lemon to it, now what's going to happen is that that copper or that pewter or that lead is going to leach right into the water. It's going to go from the container itself and into the um, and into the water. So one of the examples that you see in the um, in the book it talks about carbonated carbonated beverage dispensers. And that is simply a cool way of saying soda machine. Okay, with that, with the soda machine, um, when you go to get soda and you get, get the little thing in there, the cup, um, those little caps, they need to come off every night. Because if you don't take those caps off, what's going to happen is that the caramel, the high fructose corn syrup will dry, get hard, and then you have a potential that from the soda machine, right, so this is your cup and this is the soda machine dispenser, and it can go back, you might have a back flow to that big container that's in the back of the room, has a little valve like that, and you might contaminate, you might cross contaminate backwards, okay? So um, look at it in the book. It says if carbonated beverage dispensers are installed improperly and carbonated water is allowed to flow back into the copper lines, it could leach 
copper from the line and contaminate the beverage. Okay, so you, you have a problem here that you're also going to contaminate the beverages. So um, most, co most lines these days are no longer made out of copper. Once, once upon a time, copper was the go-to material for piping, for tubing. Today, they use PVC, right? And PVC is that hard plastic tubing. Um, it comes, it's usually white. Um, but it can become, it can be available in multiple colors. Ladies and gentlemen, that is it. I wanted to only do that one page with you. Um, please um, email me if you need the, the study guide. Um, you were only doing page 8. You're going to probably need it for Canvas because I'm going to generate some questions that I didn't get to cover on the board for the sake of time. I'm always keeping my eye on that clock. Um, have a blessed day. And I love you. Keep doing what you're doing. Take care. Bye.